Welcome to Medicine Handy Point. Today we will discuss a patient uh, with dysphagia and how to take history from the patient. So dysphagia is actually two type. One is uh, oropharyngeal dysphagia and another one is esophageal dysphagia. Now let's uh, discuss both of them one by one. A oropharyngeal dysphagia, there will be difficulty in initiating swallowing and there will in esophageal dysphagia there will be no difficulty in initiating swallowing but the food gets stuck after the swallowing usually the, behind the sternum in oropharyngeal dysphagia there will be nasal regurgitation of the food and liquid choking and cough while in the esophageal there will be no such symptom in oropharyngeal it will be worse with the liquid than solid while esophageal it will be worse with solids in oropharyngeal there will be aspiration because choking on regurgitation in while esophageal dysphagia there will be no such symptom uh, in oropharyngeal mostly neurological disease history will be present while in esophageal dysphagia there will be history of reflux dyspepsia and alarm signs like anemia and hematemesis now so when we start the history we'll start and ask the patient what happens when the food uh, is uh, placed in the mouth if the patient uh, symptoms suggest that the food gets stuck in the mouth and then ask the patient question regarding nasal regurgitation choking coughing and problem with the liquid diet if the patient say yes then it is oropharyngeal dysphagia then look for the etiology which could be a number of neurological diseases like stroke uh, like mesthenia gravis parkinson disease amyotrophic lateral sclerosis cerebral palsy and multiple sclerosis these are few of the diseases which causes dysphagia if the patient say the food gets stuck after swallowing and points towards the chest then ask where the food is uh, whether solid food is more of a problem than the liquid fluid uh, if the patient say uh, that it's a solid food which gets stuck mostly it is obstruction and usually it is malignancy and the patient will also report that it is getting worse with time then ask the patient about the reflux disease in the past, weight loss, hematemesis and ask specifically about the smoking and alcohol because they are associated with upper GI malignancy. If the patient say that this dysphagia occur with both solid and liquid equally then it is likely esophageal mortality disorder and the patient will complain of chest pain with the esophageal mortality disorder there will be a chest pain examples are diffuse esophageal spasm echolasia and systemic sclerosis where there will be problem with the mortality of the esophagus if the patient say dysphagia occur intermittently then it is likely esophageal web now some important causes of dysphagia other than we discussed early is Jogren disease, cervical spondylosis, radiation to the thorax leading to radiation esophagitis, vulvular heart disease uh, like uh, myasthenia, sorry, mitral stenosis, pressing left air, atrium pressing on the esophagus, esophageal infections like CMV, HIV, herpes, and as about uh, allergy like esophenic, so eosinophilic esophagitis, sorry. And some important medication that causes esophageal uh, injury can present as a dysphagia or NSAID, doxycycline, bisphosphonate, iron sulfate. Some important medication which affect the lower esophageal sphincter tone, uh, these are nitrates and calcium channel blockers. So ask these stuff in the uh, dysphagia history as well. I hope you like the video and please subscribe to the channel.